So CPAC 2024 just took place, and as a reminder, that's the Conservative Political Action Conference. I can understand some people would forget what the original C meant, because they're so far away from what conservatism was supposed to be uh, at this point, and really that's the entire conservative movement in America. Let's just be honest. So when you when you look over there, like what, what do you see that's conservative? Conservative, because you see like Republicanism, and you see to some degree some Trumpism, obviously, but actual conservatism, actual desire to conserve traditional values and Christian values. Um, do you see that? Because what I see are things like Lady Maga, while those who are you know further on the right are kicked out because they they make CPAC look bad, they think. Uh, people like him are allowed in. So if you don't know, um, good for you, but I'm going to ruin it. Uh, Lady Maga is the name of a drag queen that considers himself to be pro-Trump, pro, you know, well, considers himself to be conservative. His real name is Ryan Woods, and so he shows up at these uh, conservative events and prances around in a dress, uh, looking like a man who's attempting to be a woman, right? Like, like a drag queen. Um, and there's people are supposed to cheer and be glad because he's on our side and therefore it's great. And it's not, there's nothing conservative about it. There's, it's just degenerate. It's below human dignity that a person should do that at all. And, you know, there's this strong desire to completely separate and sever like the the whole drag queen movement from transgenderism, that they're entirely different. And it's true that there are differences, but they're both born from this same degenerate desire. So with transgenderism, you kind of take it further by engaging in, well, first of all, you do it full time. You uh, have the delusion that you actually are the other sex. And in many cases, they, of course, engage in bodily mutilations, whether that be via hormones or via surgeries. But the drag queen who is, you know, dressing up as, you know, a transvestite, basically, um, who's doing that, uh, they're engaging in a type of degeneracy all by themselves. It's an offshoot from what you might call the homosexual movement, of course, uh, there's nothing conservative there. These people previously would have found that to be a shameful exercise and wouldn't have brought it up at political functions. They would have kept it uh, in some shady bar that nobody wanted to go to. Um, that, you know, if they actually came out of, of the house dressed in such a way. And instead now we have them showing up at conservative functions fully allowed to just engage in this as if it's as if it's normal and that's what it comes down to is the normalization of such degenerate acts right which is also what transgenderism does is it takes this uh, it, it takes this and pushes it into the normal daily life of people who didn't want anything to do with this. And yes, ultimately, of course, it pushes it on children, but I don't think it should be pushed on society either. You know, I think it's a little too um, prone to saying, we'll just keep it away from our kids and then everything's okay. It's like, no, your kids are going to grow up in a society, right? You can't entirely just say, as long as it's not in our schools, we're fine. As long as it's not just in our libraries directed at kids, then we're fine. No, because we actually have to have a culture. We actually have to have a society. And that's the thing in which those children will grow up. There is no insulation entirely from that, that we can live in our little degenerate world, but our kids will be safe as long as they're in schools. They'll just be protected from it. That's not, that's not how it works. Um, and it's, I think it's naive in the best case to expect that. But what we're instead seeing is, you know, the the conservative movement, or we'll just call it republicanism, sliding further and further left and accepting more and more. Um, and so now all they can say is, well, we're against, you know, mutilating kids. Like, that's our line. Like, <laughs> you've, you've kind of slipped pretty far already by the time that's the only line that you have. And pretty soon it's like, well, we're opposed to, gener to mutilating kids in some scenarios when the parents don't consent. You know, and it'll, and it'll just go, go further and further, honestly, because there is no grounding. Because conservatism was supposed to be the traditionalism grounded in traditional 
traditional values. When you depart it from that, when you divorce it, if you will, there's nothing upon which you stand. And therefore, yes, you're going to have this, um, I was going to say slide toward the left, but it's not, it's more like a slide down directly into hell. And that's really what they're going toward. The Washington Examiner, which is considered to be a conservative news outlet, decided to interview this guy, Ryan Woods, so-called Lady Marga, and did so in a way with no pushback, with no like, hey, why are you, you know, dressed in a degenerate outfit at a conservative um, outlet? Do you not think there's something wrong with this? Do you not see the disconnect? Do you not see the effect upon society that such things have? You know, the, you could also say that pride parades do the same thing, of course, right? None, none of those questions were posed to him. I'll just pull it up just for a minute so you can kind of get like the vibe of the interview. I'm not going to like go through the entire thing with you because I don't think any of us gain from that. But just take a look at this, all right? So we're here at CPAC with Lady Maga. Can you tell us why you're here today and why coming to this event is so important for you? Lady Maga USA is a bright, bubbly, patriotic drag character. Um, I'm a drag artist and I use my artistry to essentially counter the arguments of the left, yeah. such as a little boy who likes Barbies is in the wrong body yeah. and they tell him that he's transgender. So I helped get Senate Bill 16 passed in Utah uh, that outlaws uh, transgender procedures, drugs and surgeries on children. How has that, you know, that, that battle that you've been fighting, that movement that you've been fighting against, how have you seen that change in the last two years? How have you seen that change in 2024 and where do you think it's going? Okay, I'm going to stop it right there because I don't think we need to listen to uh, the full thing, of course. But you can get the entire sort of way that they're treating this as if he's some kind of hero, which he tries to present himself by by trying to uh, fully delineate the, like you said, the, the drag queen story hour from his own outfit as a drag queen, right? And from transgenderism and the child mutilation from the degeneracy that he was promoting in the public square. Right? And you can't. Well, ultimately, you can. The, the two are completely uh, indistinguishable. Um, so it's disturbing when you have an, when you have like the Washington Examiner, for example, conservative outlet, uh, who's who's promoting his platform and what he's doing. And there's so much wrong in just the clip that we just showed there, because you know he he says that he's patriotic. Like in what sense? Like what is America to you? Do you think the founding fathers would be in favor of this? Like is, is that is that his argument? I, I'm not sure. Or in the modern sense. Is this good for the nation? Is this good for the country, what he's doing? No. No, it's unbelievably anti-American and anti-patriotic in the modern sense and in the historical sense. You can't fix that. Just declaring I'm a patriot doesn't make you so. You have to say, well, is what I'm doing good for my nation? Yes or no? And, and ultimately, the answer has to be no. And if you had any understanding of those traditional values that conservatism is supposed to be promoting, then he'd understand why. And it's not just Lady Marga's attendance at this C at CPAC that is the only thing that's wrong with it, because even the official speakers also uh, did things to, I don't know, push us in the wrong direction, pull us down to hell, uh, I, I suppose, <laughs> to use the same phrase I used earlier. So um, Brandon Straka, who's, you know, he's the guy who founded the walkaway movement, the walk away from the Democrats, because the Democrats have gone so far left. And so, you know, Republicanism is just like a step further right, and therefore it's not such a leap anymore. Yeah, that guy. Um, so he got on the stage and kind of announced himself like this. And hell hath no fury like a gay man scorned by the Democrat party. Yeah, so is it true though that hell hath no fury like a gay man scorned by the Democrat party? Because I don't actually think it is. You see, when you really think about it, well, what's, what's, what does, what does Satan want? Let's, let's take him at his word. Hell hath no fury, right? So let's, let's, let's take him at his word. Do we really think that what Satan would be would be most upset about would be a gay man scorn. It, it doesn't make any sense. You want to you know be anti Satan. Well, if you're you know a straight man, then go and get married and raise a family and raise them in the faith and promote traditional values. Um, that would be a good a good way to do it. You know, if you're a man who is struggling with homosexual ideation and you live a chaste life, but you still applaud the good, the true, and the beautiful. You still encourage and live 
the faith. You still encourage traditional values. You don't identify yourself by your vices. Instead, you live as as you are made in the image and likeness of God. And recognizing that, you don't live to your like most primal to your to your worst vices. You don't identify yourself by those and encourage those on society. You you be your best, you be who you were made to be, quite literally. Which is not to just say, hey, I'm I'm a gay man and therefore, you know, like this is just some some joke and I identify myself primarily by that. That's his entire like identity on stage. Um and so when you've got like so called conservatives who are talking about the the sexualization of children and the exposure of children to homosexual ideology, well look at CPAC. Because you want to talk normalization, it's right there on stage. That's normalization. And I know it seems a little bit uh, unusual to hear somebody who is is talking like I'm talking, as if, you know, uh, promoting homosexuality is a bad thing. Because it is. But that's what actual conservatism looks and sounds like. Like, like someone who actually wants a culture that's worthy of the name, and a civilization likewise. And to do that, we actually have to be willing to have values and to enforce them and encourage them and to say that some things are wrong, some are right, and the truth is discernible. That what is, that what is good is not just relativistic. And instead, that what, what you have at CPAC being promoted is the idea that that what is right and what is good is so relativistic that we're just slightly behind where the Democrats are on, on their way to promoting the worst degeneracy that they can possibly think of. Like, this is not conservatism. Uh, it never has been. And if we're to fix the direction of the country, uh, this has to be fixed.